Ayo, new hair check. Hello everyone, this is Kelly Mara here. As you've probably seen from the title, today I will be redesigning Yandere Simulator's main protagonist, Ayano Aishi. If you watched my previous video where I talk about improving the game by getting rid of Infochan, you would also know that I am quite well versed and invested in the characters of Yandere Simulator. Although I will admit, I'm not the biggest fan of the game's lore, it's just too juvenile for my taste shall we say, and I think it invests way too much time in building that lore instead of the actual game's playable story, Yandere Simulator has a lot of untapped potential. Where the game suffers most, in my opinion, is not in the playability, coding or assets, but the very backbone of the game itself, the narrative. This is why despite the endless amount of lore surrounding the game, the story still feels shallow and the characters still feel one-dimensional. I decided to take it upon myself to remedy these issues. I'm basically doing the same thing again today, but with Ayano specifically. I did divulge a little bit on how we can give Ayano a more active role in the game's story in my previous video, so if you want to go and watch that, please do so after this video. To summarize, I suggested the opening cutscene should have Ayano stalking Senpai instead of a text message from Infochan and finding out about Osana that way, and discovering her plan to confess to him at the cherry blossom tree and the cherry blossom myth itself should be discovered by doing investigative work such as asking around and building relationships with people, replacing the schemes mechanic with journal entries that are more prodding than handholding getting rid of the info store and scattering items around the school environment so that the player will do more exploration to find elimination methods and items, and recommending that there be more interaction between Senpai and Ayano to make us care about their relationship. But in order to reconstruct a character, we need to dissect them first and figure out where the issue is. Let's list some of the issues with Ayano that I would prioritize in a redesign and a rewrite. So the first issue I have is that Ayano is so boring. Yandere Dev has purposefully made her a blank slate so players can imprint themselves more easily on her, but that idea only works when the character actually has reactions and opinions on something, which Ayano doesn't. So we know that this approach isn't gonna work. Next is that her design is generic, because it is literally a character purchased from the Unity Asset Store with minimal modification and is therefore not a unique, marketable property of its own. Anyone can purchase the same asset and create a game with her as the main character, and Yandere Dev would not be able to claim legal ownership of it because it is a public asset. Finally, her backstory is just… edgy, TM. <laughs> Let's dive into this, shall we? Ayano has suffered from an inexplicable, incurable condition. This condition leaves her with a perpetual sense of being empty, hollow, and incomplete. As a result, she has never been able to experience satisfaction, fulfillment, or happiness, and has not been able to experience emotions in the same capacity as other people. So, I'm assuming that this is Yandere Dev's attempt at describing the Yandere condition, right? Basically making up his own canon on how Yandere's in this universe work? And what evidence do I have of this claim? Well, Ayano's mother, Ryoba, of course, who we also know was a Yandere and that she had the same experiences Ayano did that after she met her senpai, she finally felt complete, and that's the same experience Ayano has with Taro. She became addicted to the feeling of completion and will now do anything and everything necessary to keep him for herself. Only the latter of this depiction is accurate to what Ariandere actually is in the conventional sense, a character who becomes violently possessive of a love interest. The reason why, admittedly, is up to the individual creator to decide. And in Ayano's case, this is where Yandere Dev took creative liberty. I'm quite certain that this has already been brought up by other YouTubers before, but it's blatantly obvious from his Gaia Online post, which is public knowledge by now, that he created Ayano and her mother, who he has openly declared as his favorite character in Yandere Simulator and likely why he invests so much time and effort and pushes so hard for a 1980s mode where you play as her, 
to cater to his own preferences in a romantic partner. Now, keep in mind that I don't have the full context and this was posted way back in 2008, but essentially Yandere Dev is replying to someone who said, you really need to learn how to find happiness from yourself and not others, or the comfort of a relationship, which is nothing but straight facts, my dude. But Yandere Dev responds, what would be the point of that? I don't just want to be loved, I want to be a vital, central part of a girl's life. I want to be an important, essential person to a girl. I want the girl to be my equal, but I also want her to adore me. Why bother being with someone who is already complete and happy with who they are? Then you would only be an accessory to their life. If someone is complete and content, they need no love. Love is for people who need it to become complete. <laughs> Holy smokes, my guy! That is the most wrong opinion I have ever read in my life about love and self-contentment, and it hurt. It hurt. Now, you might say, Kelly, that was 13 years ago. He definitely would have changed by now. He's even asked for the thread to be deleted because people kept googling it and using it to ridicule him in present day. Which is fair, 13 years is definitely ample time for someone to grow up and change, so has he? No, absolutely not. If his favorite character in the game is of any indication of his current tastes, then he evidently has not changed. He's just gotten better at keeping his opinions to himself and after all, we write what we know. Now, you might not have a problem with this, but from a character creation perspective, I personally do. The ideas are interesting, but shallow. He doesn't expand on the concepts, he doesn't do research, he doesn't even use references to make the concepts more tangible, and nowadays, anime characters aren't that thoughtless. Writers put a lot of effort and research into their characters to make them feel real and grounded. They reference complex philosophies and follow certain design rules that make their characters good. It's a whole entire skill to make good, believable characters, and many of these characters often come from anime. So saying that Yandere Simulator is based on anime is blatantly not an excuse. If anything, it is super condescending and disrespectful to Japanese anime as a genre. Yes, there are trashy wish fulfillment anime out there that uses stereotypical tropes and plays up the one-dimensional characters, but you'd also still call them trash anime. Trash is trash no matter the culture or genre. But based on these three points, I've created four goals for myself. First, give Ayano a more distinctive design. Second, rework her personality to make her more compelling as a character. Third, revise her backstory to make everything make sense, and fourth, implement these factors into the game. I've got my work cut out for me, so let's get right into it. Tackling Ayano's design, it has certainly become iconic over the years from a visual perspective, but it was never an original design to begin with. Not to mention, the uniform for which the character is most known for isn't even correct. All it takes is a quick Google search to find out that the seifuku or sailor uniform is worn by middle school students. It used to be worn by high school students, but today it is associated solely with junior high school students, whereas high school students or upper secondary students have more western style plaid skirts or blazers. So the original uniform that the Aoi character came in was actually more accurate than the design Yandere Dev chose. That was one point I definitely needed to hit in my redesign, so I gave Ayano a blazer, plaid skirt, and ribbon tie instead of her seihuku. This leads us to our next trickier point, her age. This is one of the main reasons I advocated so strongly in my Infochan video to get rid of the panty shot, kidnapping, and Yakuza human trafficking ring thing completely. Without these things, it would be more acceptable for the students to be below 18. 
in my head, it was either get rid of the inappropriate core mechanics that sexually exploited minors so that it would be acceptable for them to be minors, or change the setting to a university so that everyone is sure to be of age. Because in high school, there is invariably going to be kids of different ages, and the majority of them will be under 18. Assuming that Taro is a senior, Ayano should be in the grade below him, giving them a one-year gap, which would justify her calling him senpai but also making sure they aren't too far apart developmentally. Next, I completely redid her hair. Yes, the ponytail and fringe combo is iconic to Ayano, but that's less of a testament to its uniqueness as it is familiarity. Back when Love Letter was also using the Aoi character for their game, Yandere Dev said that Girl in sailor uniform with a black ponytail is Ayano's signature look, which I'm sure if you put it that way, it doesn't really sound that distinctive or unique at all. Because hair is a woman's crown, I wanted to do something really special for Ayano to make her feel more distinct. I decided to carry over the fringes from Ayano's original design, but made it a bit denser over her forehead to make her eyes look more shadowed, which gives her an ominous, unsettling impression. Initially, I wanted to go for a chic bob because I thought that would look stunning and the look seems to be really popping off lately. What with the new Ghost in the Shell remake coming to Netflix and Alice in Borderlands smash hit. I also really admire 2B's look, but when matched to a school uniform, it looked surprisingly plain. So unfortunately, I had to scrap that idea. From there, I played around with the idea of an updo because I still wanted that clean, chic, off-shoulder look while still creating a unique silhouette, so I went for a bun. I loved the final look because it gave me major Azula vibes, which I felt was appropriate for Ayano's character because they're both ruthless psychopaths who see no issue in committing mass genocide. But the problem is also that she looks too much like Azula, and I want her to look like her own person. So I decided to go with a style I personally like a lot but isn't that commonly seen in modern character depictions. A half bun with the rest of her hair flowing free. It's sort of a classical look that you'd see more often in Asian period dramas, and I was really happy with the final look because it's very distinct and it makes her look really sophisticated and ladylike, which is very important for the new backstory I've written up for her. Another major modification was her face. Now, the in-game models for Yandere Simulator don't really allow for a lot of unique characteristics aside from eye and hair color, so I made it a point to make Ayano's facial features more distinct. First, I gave her very fair skin, which is quite typical for Japanese complexions and anime in general, and I made her eyes more of a fox eye shape, which gives her a cunning, intelligent look that makes you feel like she's watching your every move and calculating the best way to take you down. I paired this with dark, intense irises that pierce into your very soul, and I attempted to do this by minimizing the amount of light being reflected and instead focusing it in her pupil, which makes her look more dangerous and unpredictable from my perspective. It sort of reminded me the way predators' eyes glow in the darkness when they're stalking their prey. The result is an undeniably beautiful girl who just has something off about her. There's something about her gaze that doesn't look quite right, but it's probably nothing, right? Now that we have her design, let's work on her personality. I basically have complete liberty to play with this because the original was so purposefully designed to be boring. Although I am adhering as closely as I can to the Yandere trope. So for Ayano, I've decided to go for a cunning, intelligent personality. She's resourceful, relentless, and unyielding. Ruthless and opportunistic, she's a quick thinker and a quick study who picks things up without much of a struggle, be it a skill or a subject in class, but her intellectual advantages come with severe emotional disadvantages. She is extremely apathetic and struggles to relate to others. She doesn't even understand her own emotions or how to deal with them, let alone how to deal with others. In fact, she gets quite frightened by how powerful her feelings are at times, and as a result, often tries to suppress them. 
One emotion she has the most trouble suppressing, however, is her feeling of possessiveness and her fear of losing those close to her. She has a desperate need to feel accepted and normal, but she has trouble letting others in. However, those who do manage to crawl under her skin, she forms extreme attachments to. To the point, she has no issues manipulating, taking advantage of, tricking, or even severely harming others to do so. And now, for her backstory. Strap yourselves in folks, it's gonna be a long one. Also, for reasons that will be explained later on, I will start referring to Ayano as simply Yandere Chan. Yandere Chan is an orphan. She has a severe case of psychosis that was left untreated and undiagnosed, causing her to misbehave and do poorly in school. This led to numerous arguments with her parents, which caused further mental and emotional distress within her as she is forced to wrestle with these hallucinations and voices inside her head. Japan is notorious for overlooking mental health, so when she tells her parents about this, they don't believe her and force her to keep it to herself as to not embarrass them further. One day, an incident happens at school. She gets beat up by some older kids and her parents, instead of defending her, put all the blame on her to please the other kids' parents, who were wealthier and more influential. That night, she snaps and murders both her parents in an acute psychotic episode. Concerned neighbors informed the police of a suspected murder. When they arrived, they found her catatonic in the corner of the room, rocking back and forth. She was taken into custody by the government, admitted to a youth psychiatric hospital where she was monitored not only for psychotic symptoms, but suicidal tendencies due to the guilt she felt from murdering her own parents. The years after that were rough. Her life was spent entirely within the psychiatric ward walls under strict supervision. Life lost all luster, all meaning. She had no one left, no family, no friends, and no future. The nurses and doctors have tried to convince her that she can still have a future despite what happened, that life can still go on, but in her mind, she had no reason to live at all. She mourned for the longest time trying her best to get better so she can be placed into a new family, but it was no use. Until one day, when she had just turned 16, a new patient was admitted to the ward. It was a boy her age, a very handsome boy. The nurses encouraged them to interact with each other, but they were both hesitant to do so at first, until he eventually approached her and asked her what she's there for. Unable to tell him the truth, she simply says, I did a bad thing. A very bad thing. Sensing her reluctance, he doesn't push further. How long have you been here for? He asks. A long time, she responds. And I will probably never leave. He chuckles bitterly. Why do you say that? She looks at him with her dead eyes and says, I do not deserve to. He's taken aback by this and glances away uncomfortably. He pauses for a very long time then says, I know how you feel. And now it's her turn to be surprised. You do? He looks back at her but this time his eyes are different. They reflected hers perfectly, dead and hollow. I feel the same way. She stares at him for the longest time, utterly perplexed. Not once in her entire life had she been told that. That someone understood her. That they related to her experience. He was the first and only person who spoke to her without pity or fear, apprehension or disgust. He made her feel like a real person. They grew closer after that participating in activities together and spending entire days just making small talk about the most random things. She learns that he had been admitted for almost killing himself. He showed her the scars he bore from his attempt. She felt this fire inside of her suddenly, a strange anger burning bright at the thought of him getting hurt or dying. 
She was determined to protect him, no matter what. He gave her a reason to get better and continue living. Eventually, he was discharged. Before he left, he tells her to promise that she'll get better and be discharged too, so they can meet again someday. And from then on, she was determined to follow after him, but despite her best efforts, she simply couldn't pass the psychiatric review. They kept telling her she was too unstable, too fixated on this boy and that they were concerned something bad might happen if they discharge her. And so, she took it into her own hands. One evening, she successfully managed to slip out into the garden and hide in the shrubbery when the outdoor curfew has taken effect. She manages to climb the fence and discharge herself, escaping the health facility and disappearing into the night. She returns to her old family home, which was left empty and abandoned as no one wanted to purchase a house where such a gruesome murder had occurred, and without any proper maintenance work, it had been condemned by the city. No one would look for her there. And now, we get to the implementation phase. The game would begin with a quick animatic of Yandere chan arriving at the house, the hospital tag still on her wrist, and her coming inside. We get control of Yandere chan several days later, inside her house getting ready for orientation day at her new school. We get to explore the house, which Yandere chan has tried to clean up as best as she can, and we find the following things. The house still had running water, and the generator they kept in the shed still worked, giving us electricity. All the furniture had been cleared out, but the stains left by her parents' blood were still there, though faintly. If you interact with it, you would get flashes of the night Yandere chan killed her parents, alluding to her dark and tragic backstory which leads to a severe drop in Yandere chans mental state. This results in Yandere chan hearing voices and seeing hallucinations. Here, we get a tutorial on how to stabilize Yandere chans mind when her mental state begins to deteriorate. This is similar to the laughing mechanic in the original game, but in my version, Yandere chan will use management techniques she had learned in the psych ward. It will be a variety of things such as deep breathing techniques, thinking pleasant thoughts or goals to motivate herself, which can also involve quick time events, and, throw back to my previous video, journaling. When the player goes to school and learns about clubs, they will also unlock more management techniques through extracurricular activities such as painting or gardening. The players can utilize one or a combination of these techniques to help Ayano stabilize her mental condition. I would like to put a disclaimer that this is a massive oversimplification of how people deal with real psychosis and is in no way an accurate representation of the real thing. However, Yandere-chan knows it will still be a matter of time before her psychosis creeps up on her again without her medications as all medications on a psych ward is heavily secured by the nurses in a medication room, and she has a very limited supply. Before her escape, she has managed to stash a few doses in preparation. However, she cannot purchase more of these medications because they require prescriptions, and she knows that if any doctor were to examine her, they would send her straight back to the psychiatric ward right away. Visual and auditory hallucinations, delusions, paranoia, disordered thinking, and disordered behavior will not only make it harder for her to interact with her senpai, but to care for herself in general. The further we go into the game, the more difficult it will become because Yandere chan will run out of medications and her mind will be actively working against her and pushing her towards more violent actions. Her mental condition will deteriorate much more quickly, and the success rate of her management techniques will decrease. We leave the house and meet a girl who looks pretty affluent, and she gives us textbooks, an expensive backpack, a cell phone, and tells us some basic information about the school and our classes. This is how we learn to rank up Yandere chans subjects. She also tells us to make a good impression and to not mess up her reputation, since we are pretending to be her after all, so her image is on the line. Remember the deal? 
We then get a flashback sequence of how Yandere Chan came to enroll at Academy High. Playing as Yandere Chan from earlier that week, she wanders the town, our goal being to try and find free food handouts. We see her mulling over the school that Taro said he went to, that he's starting a new grade this year and decides that she will attend the school too. There's just one problem. Money. Upper secondary schools in Japan are private, meaning students will have to pay tuition to enroll. Considering Academy High is supposed to be an incredibly prestigious school, it will cost a lot for Yandere Chan to attend, even if she were to pass the entrance exam. While walking around, she ends up in the commercial area and notices a small group of wealthy kids. Initially planning to try and steal money from them, when we stealth up behind them, we overhear their conversation, and we realize that the leader of the group is to attend the same school Taro is, but that she really doesn't want to go and would rather go traveling around the world. However, her father still wants her to get a report card from that school so she can attend university and then run the family business. That's when Yandere Chan interjects and offers to attend the school in her place. Her father will think she's attending school and being a good student. Yandere Chan will take all her tests and do her assignments for her, and she can do whatever she wants. The offer tempts the rich girl, of course, but she suspiciously asks, And what's in it for you? And Yandere Chan says, I'm just a poor orphan. Attending such a prestigious school would be a dream come true. Of course, I will need a uniform, textbooks, a mobile phone to contact you with in case anything happens, and money. The girl crosses her arms suspiciously. How much? Yandere chan smirks deviously. Oh, not a lot. Just enough for lunch and new clothes. Maybe a haircut so I can pass myself off as you more easily too. And with that, a deal was struck. I considered the idea that this rich girl is now our new Info-chan in the sense that she gives us essential resources like money, who we can contact for guidance on the do's and don'ts of how to behave and some basic information on the school. A bit like our person behind the scenes, but much more scaled back. With this setup, we also have a stronger reason for why Yandere Chan has to be on her best behavior, do well in classes, and keep her reputation up because she doesn't want to draw any unwanted attention on herself. On top of that, if Yandere Chan were to act on her delusions and commit murder, getting caught has much more severe implications as she would immediately be found by the police and taken straight back to the psychiatric ward. We return to the current timeline where we nod in agreement to the wealthy girl's statement, then part ways. We go to school and attend orientation day with a drama club for basic mechanics like how to interact with objects, people, how to stealth, steal, kill, and dispose bodies. The rest of the game would go the same way I suggested in my previous video. We will get to interact with senpai and get to know him, and occasionally, at certain locations or moments, we would get flashbacks of Yandere Chan's murder of her parents, her time at the psychiatric ward, and her escape, which I think would be a fun little segment to play on its own. Of course, you're probably wondering now if we're pretending to be someone else who attends school, then who actually are we? Well, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Should Ayano Aishi be Yandere Chan's true identity or her fake one? What should her true or fake name be? Or should it be left unknown? Comment your suggestions in the comment section below. The suggestion I like best will be featured in my next video where I redesign and rewrite Senpai. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. It's definitely the longest, most difficult script I've ever written so far and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm always trying to improve myself for you guys and the amount of growth I've had just this last month has been incredible. I can't believe I, I can actually earn money from YouTube now and I'm hoping it can lead to an actual career but at the moment I'm just enjoying myself while creating videos on topics I personally enjoy. If you enjoyed the way I rewrote Ayano's story or you like the way I story tell, please check out my comic because that will make me really happy. Follow me on all my social media and I will see you guys in the next video.
Goodbye.